Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Pagam Radian here at the Association of the United States Army's annual conference and trade show in Washington, D.C., the number one gathering of U.S. Army leaders from around the world. Our coverage here is sponsored by General Motors Defense, Bell, L3 Harris and Leonardo DRS. And it's our pleasure to be talking to Brigadier General uh, Greg Brady, who is the Commanding General of the 10th Air and Missile Defense Command uh, in uh, K-Town in Kaiserslautern, uh, Germany. Sir, thanks very much for joining us. Hey, thank you, Bob, and thank you for having me here today. Uh, it's an absolute uh, pleasure. Uh, we were talking a little bit about the ease of the challenge that you have on the very edge of an anti-access area uh, denial bubble. Obviously, uh, the Russian military having invested uh, quite a lot of thinking uh, in that, the Gerasimov doctrine very live and, and in your face. I mean, it's been really interesting talking to senior military leaders about how closely we're studying those, uh, the, the, that doctrine and the Chinese doctrine. Talk to us a little bit about the challenges associated with air and missile defense uh, from a European theater perspective. You know, we have about 60 Patriot batteries all around the world uh, with uh, about 15 battalions all around the world at the end of the day. One of them is over in Europe right now. Talk to us about the air and missile defense challenge in Europe and how you guys are adjusting to this new reality. So two areas of focus have been on uh, the modernization of AMD capability and on growth, our capacity uh, of our formations, with specific to uh, U.S. Army Europe. And over the last two years, we've had some great changes. First of all, we increased the uh, headquarters for the Army Air Missile Defense Command. Uh, it's now a general officer command, and we've increased by an additional 50 personnel. Uh, but also, we brought in the newest short-range air defense battalion for the United States Army. So this is the first time that the Army has stationed a, actually a short-range air defense battalion since 2004. Uh, but additionally, uh, we're focusing a lot on uh, exercises with our allies right now. And so that's one of the areas that we're going to be able to increase the capacity is being able to train alongside. As you, said, as you stated out, you know, we only have four you know, Patriot batteries here, one battalion in Europe. But there are also other uh, of our allies that do have uh, Patriot battalions across Europe. And, and talk to us about how you're integrating uh, with all your allies and how allies in exercise after exercise are also building up their capabilities. Just like the United States was involved in the counterinsurgency fight in Iraq and Afghanistan, many of our allies were focused on that challenge as opposed to being focused on their sort of historical territorial defense. They too are stepping up their great power game. How are you working this together? Well, so first of all, you know, we have some uh, planned exercises with our allies uh, for the Patriot Force. Uh, there's an exercise called Astral Night. Uh, but additionally, uh, we have, uh, after the Defender 20 series, we also will be uh, focusing on uh, the Aurora exercises with Sweden. And we also have some different uh, exercises that will build this uh, integration with our, uh, with our uh, air defense uh, uh, partners out there. Uh, but one unique thing, as I talked earlier on capacity growth, uh, is that we now have an air defense artillery brigade that is rotating in to Europe. And with the Air Defense Artillery Brigade, that's really where it's going to start with building these key relationships with our allies. And, and, and you know, the three parts really to interoperability as we talk is on the human aspect of it, the technical, the procedure. And the human is really important because when you look at it, having these relationships, and it kind of goes back to our value set. When you have common shared values, that leads to relationships. You increase the frequency, it leads to strong relationships. And strong relationships lead to trust. And that is one of the bedrocks of this whole interoperability piece. Uh, and of course, it also helps that a lot of the uh, nations in Europe also are operating Patriot batteries with whom you can uh, you can cooperate. Um, talk to us a little bit, though, about the challenge, right? So you have the short-range air defenses now that you have there, the shore ad. But when you look at the kind of capabilities the Russians are trying to bring to bear, um, they're increasingly longer range. Um, hypersonics, or at least it's a claim that they're being able to field uh, hypersonic weapons. Uh, you have the caliber cruise missile, uh, which uh, was the violating element of uh, the, uh, the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. One of the reasons the United States looked at Russian capability and said, okay, look, you guys are violating this treaty and why the North Atlantic Alliance ultimately, as an alliance, agreed that it was okay for the United States to abrogate uh, and get out of that treaty. Talk to us a little bit about the challenges in, uh, because you're on the wrong side of the cost equation, right? You have very, very expensive interceptors with an adversary that has actually a lot of perhaps less expensive weapons with which they're going to attack you. What are the operating concepts you need? And actually, what's the role of attack in something like this? Because nobody ever def defended their way to victory. So when the first part is the Army's focus right now on um, air and missile defense modernization, as you know, the Chief of Staff of the Army and the Secretary of the Army has highlighted that uh, of the six modernization priorities, 
Number five is Army Air Missile Defense. So the first piece is, is on the Army's integrated air missile defense concept, being able to utilize any sensor and best shooter. It goes to your point about, hey, might not have enough interceptors, but I want to use, keep my most important you know, capabilities with our interceptors for the most pressing threats. And so that's an area that we are focused on right now. The Army actually has an air missile defense test attachment testing what's called the IBCS capability. But simultaneously, we're building onto our maneuver shore at being able to go after our UAS, rotor wing, fixed wing threats. But one of the key principles to air missile defense is the mix. So you're not going to have one interceptor to take care of all these threats. So the next capability you're bringing on is the indirect fire protection capability, which will go after, once again, our most pressing threats, but also the cruise missile threat. And then ultimately, replacing the Patriot radar, which is called the lower tier air missile defense sensor. And that is ongoing right now. So within these four areas, these are going to be what we're going to use as we move forward. Uh, and how does hypersonic uh, change uh, the environment and uh, the dynamic? Because from a missile warning standpoint, things get a lot more challenging. Uh, from an interception standpoint, they get a lot more challenging. How are you guys thinking through that element of the problem? Well, that's part of our modernization area. So you know the Army has stood up a new you know, uh, uh, a three-star command, and it's, taken, it's looking at these uh, capabilities for hypersonics. We're focusing on defensive hypersonics as part of our AIMD concept and as we look for future capabilities through the LTAMs. These are areas that we'll be looking to, uh, you know, uh, be able to develop these capabilities. And, uh, and that is uh, a, partnered, uh, a partnership uh, between the United States Army and the United States Navy uh, that are working that. There's a three-star admiral that's working. Uh, and I can't remember the general officer's name. He's, he's at the tip of my tongue who's Lieutenant doing general that. Lieutenant Thurgood? Yeah, Lieutenant General Thurgood, exactly. Uh, that, would be, that would be the three-star general that we would be talking about. Um, from your standpoint, um, what kind of planning are you doing for added surge capability, right? I mean, in the end, uh, in any crisis, a large part of what the United States Army does is do all of that foundational thinking before you need to do it in the event that for forces do have to surge into, into theater. Talk to us about a little bit of the thinking in terms of how you would bolster your capabilities should, in an unfortunate sense, things take a turn for the worst and you, are, uh, you need to be augmented by forces from the United States. Uh, so which would lead me in to discuss uh, Defender 20, because this exercise is going to really focus on the strategic readiness now. We've done such a great job over the last couple of years with tactical readiness, but the strategic readiness, and within Defender 20, uh, the Army Air Missile Defense Command will be actually be able to validate our capacity to support the, you know, the RSOI, the, you know, the, you know, the bringing in forces into Europe, but also of setting the theater. And that's going to be an important mission for our command. And so that's where we'll have a good opportunity to look at that as well as our brigade headquarters, because you know that headquarters is be doing a lot of the mission command for a lot of our battalions. Um, low stress jobs. So, what's the one thing that keeps you awake at night, sir? There are many things that keep me awake at night, uh, but uh, just being able to ensure that uh, we stay on track with our modernization capability and increasing the growth for our air missile defense force. Brigadier General Greg Brady, who is the Commanding General of the 10th Air and Missile Defense Command in sunny K-Town, Germany. Sir, thanks very much. It's a, it's a real pleasure. Uh, congratulations, and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, in sunny Germany one of these days. Well, we hope to see you out there, Baga. You're always welcome to come visit us anytime.